Well, friends, why don't we get started and we will let other people in as they come. We are so delighted you're here. I am Margaret Somerville and we are in this beautiful space of alignment in the middle of the month of fast for the Baha'i faith and the first day of the month of fast of Ramadan and in the middle of Lent, the time of fast in the Christian tradition. So what a beautiful time to all come together. We join in this space every week for a half hour of prayer and meditation from a different tradition. And this week we are so deeply honored to have Elika and Terry Mayani leading us in our Baha'i meditations tonight, all the way from China. And it is Monday for them. And through this beautiful, beautiful, uh, the wonders of technology, we can all be together. So as um, you feel comfortable, we would love to hear where you all are at this moment, if you would like to pop in the chat. And feel free to use the chat for any thoughts that come up, um, prayers that you want to be held as we go through the evening together. But now I pass it over to our dear and wonderful Elika and Terry to lead us tonight. Hi, Margaret, and thank you for inviting us to be with you today. And hello to everyone who's joined. We are honored to be here to share some music and prayers from the Baha'i Writings. And so today what we've planned for you, we have five pieces of music, three videos and two chants. And after each piece of music, we thought we'd wait 10 seconds and have some silence. And if during that time you would like to share any reflections in the chat, as Margaret mentioned, feel free to do so. Or if you would like to just sit quietly, also that's wonderful. So as it is the Baha'i Fast, we wanted to start by providing a brief introduction to this uh, spiritual practice and its significance. And uh, Terry, will, Terry, my husband, will share some thoughts with you about this special time of year. Thank you, Alika. Thank you, Margaret, for uh, inviting us to this wonderful space. And, uh, and thanks for all the other friends who've joined today. So as uh, Margaret mentioned, uh, fasting is pretty much a universal religious uh, practice. I think in uh, at least every religious tradition that I'm aware of, uh, fasting is really one of the, the central practices together with prayer and meditation. And, uh, and for the Baha'is, it's a, uh, a, a time to reflect on the year because of the Baha'i calendar. So uh, many of you are aware that the Baha'i New Year falls on the first day of spring. Uh, so it's what we call Nowruz, uh, which is actually the ancient Persian uh, a New Year celebration. And Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, was uh, from Persia. So uh, that uh, celebration falls this year on March 20th. Some years it's March 21st, uh, this year it's March 20th. So the Baha'i fast is always the last 19 days of the Baha'i year. And you might ask, why 19 days? Well, <laughs> it's because the Baha'i calendar has 19 months and each month has 19 days, which uh, if you do the math really quickly, it's 361 days. And then there's an additional four day festival period. So it's a solar calendar, 365 uh, days. But the fast is always the last 19 days, the last month of the year. And it seems to me that the reason it's at that time of the year is so we can reflect on what we've done in the previous year and think maybe are there any things we want to improve for the coming year and just have a time to sort of step back from the daily uh, busyness of life and the, you know, the, the, the work and the responsibilities and spend more time focused on our, on our spiritual growth and development. Um, and, and from the perspective of the Baha'i writings, really the, the primary purpose of life is to develop the qualities of the soul, the 
qualities of love and forgiveness and compassion and mercy and wisdom. So once a year, at least, we have a kind of a focus time to think about those qualities and uh, and to, yeah, as I said, kind of just slow down a little bit from the, the normal pace of life. So uh, given that it's in the middle of the Baha'i fast and, uh, and these other fasting traditions, we thought it'd be you know, a good topic for today's uh, sharing. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Elika and she'll share a little bit more. All right, thank you, Terry. All right, so for the first piece, I chose a few of my favorite passages from the Baha'i writings regarding the Baha'i fast and its significance. There's a beautiful passage in the video from Shoghi Effendi about the meaning and significance of the fast. Shoghi Effendi was the great grandson of Baha'u'llah. So the title of the piece that I'd like to share with you is Every Hour of These Days. And I've always found it fascinating to think about how each moment, each second of our day, Baha'u'llah says, is endowed with a special virtue. The fast, I find, is one of the most creative times of the year for me because I find that our virtues are magnified during this time. So I, I really use this opportunity to try and be as creative as possible. So with that, I hope you enjoy the video. endowed every hour of these days with a special virtue inscrutable to all except thee thou hast endowed every hour of these days with a special virtue inscrutable to all On spiritual station fasting is the cause of the elevation of one spiritual station Fuck. 
fasting is essentially a period of meditation and prayer, of spiritual recuperation, during which the believer must strive to make the necessary readjustments in his inner life and to refresh and reinvigorate the spiritual forces latent in his soul. Next, I would like to chant a prayer for you titled, Rely Upon God. This prayer is one that I sing most often in gatherings or even at home because it brings me a sense of joy and solace. And it also allows me to refocus my mind on relying on God and trusting in Him rather than focusing on fear and doubt. My favorite part of the prayer is when Abdul Baha, where he says, and Abdul Baha was the son of Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha says, he verily turneth trouble into ease and sorrow into solace and toil into utter peace. So I'd love to chant that for you now. Rely upon God, trust in Him, praise Him and call Him continually to mind. He verily turneth trouble into ease and sorrow to solace and toil into utter peace. He verily hath dominion over all things. He verily hath dominion over Thank you, Alaka. So the next video that we will be sharing is a video that Alaka made based on one of the short meditational passages that Baha'u'llah wrote, and it's called My Light and My Glory. And it's a message to us really to remind us that God is in us, that God's light is in us and that our task in this world really is to to reflect that light and to bring that light into this uh into this world which uh is in is in dire need of 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 light so um with that unless elika has any other comments would you like you good i think it's good okay so with that we will share the video Bear with me just for a second while I get the uh, the video set up.
So, yeah, I actually just wanted to say the last part of the video is one of my highlights because the, I wanted to highlight Thou art my light, Thou art my glory. And it's, a, as Terry said, a wonderful reminder that we reflect His light and His glory. So I loved the way the harmonies played with one another to really highlight and lift us up at the end of the video there. So the next piece, um, you know, as the world is facing severe calamities and uh, many, so many friends are suffering, the words in this next piece bring me a sense of hope and upliftment. And what I did is I decided to include four separate passages from Abdul Baha and combine them into one song. In these inspiring quotes, there's a common theme of life's challenges and each quotation focuses on a virtue to strengthen. In the first quote, Abdul Baha says, we must look higher than all earthly thoughts detach ourselves from every material idea, crave for the things of the spirit. So this one focuses on elevating our thoughts and working on detachment. The next quote, let nothing grieve thee and be thou angered at none, calls for forgiveness and forbearance. The third quote, when calamity striketh, be ye patient and composed. Counsels us to remain calm and patient in times of difficulty. And in the last quotation, Abdul Baha says, Be thou not unhappy, the tempest of sorrow shall pass, regrets will not last disappointment will vanish. In other words, this too shall pass, reminding us to practice joy and acceptance. I hope you enjoy the video.
So this last prayer is a short healing prayer revealed by Baha'u'llah and is another of my favorites to chant. Every day I recite or I chant this prayer for friends and loved ones. I've made a list of, of anyone who needs prayers and I love to chant this prayer for them. And I'd like to dedicate the prayer today to my mom who's in hospital at the moment, and to anyone else who is struggling with their physical, emotional, or spiritual health. <clears throat> Thy name is my healing, oh my God. And remembrance of thee is my remedy. Nearness to thee is my hope. And love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing and my succor. In both this world and the world to come, Thou verily art the all-bountiful, the all-knowing, the all-wise. so grateful to you for leading us through this time this very very special time and you both capture what is so deeply the intention of alignment that we're able to be in touch with that divine light that that originates within ourselves to know it and to love it and thereby to love ourselves more deeply and to be vessels of that light to reflect, which you most certainly do with your beautiful presentation of putting the Baha'i writings into music and image so gloriously. Oh. And so may we all be those vessels to reflect that light, that divine light that we know within ourselves. You are our beautiful souls and we are so grateful to have you joining us here tonight thank you so much margaret we for having you, us you we hold your mother in light thank you. Um, thank you we so appreciate you inviting us to be here and we also are grateful for all the friends who've joined us today it was such a pleasure to to share some prayers and writings with you Thank you, Elikajun. Thank you. Oh, our pleasure. With all my heart for your mom and your family. Thank you. Thank you. you. I you. hope everyone to see all of you from around the world, literally around the world tonight. We are in this space every week at this time. Same link. Log on whenever you need to, whenever you um, need this time, this community. We are here with prayers from different traditions every week. But to our dear, dear presenters tonight, Elika and Terry, such deep gratitude and peace. Margaret, the, thank you, Margaret. Thank you for all the service that you're doing, Margaret, for sharing all of these wonderful traditions with everyone around the world. It's really wonderful work that you're doing. Thank so you. we applaud you. Thank you. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. <laughs> well